Hello there, it's Andy Younes from FormServe once again. Something different for you this time, a set of bite sized training. I'm going to go through a set of videos on writing bash scripts for the IBM I. Just as knowing CL programming has become a necessity on the IBM I, and with open source on the IBM I hitting the headlines daily, the need to be able to write shell scripts is coming more and more of a requirement. They are not as daunting as they first seem. They will help with your day-to-day -day tasks. Hopefully you would have already seen my video on how to use shells on the IBM I, where I discuss what bash is, how to get it, and how to install it. I'll put the link to that video in the description. Also, all the examples I show will be available for download at our GitHub repository. Again, the link in the description. To get a notification of when the next video in the series is released, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. This training series will be split into the following topics. Using variables and arguments, or parameters as we know them. Conditioning statements such as ifs, else and case statements. Then how we can use loops in our scripts. In the next session, we'll discuss how functions can be employed and their benefits. Then we will be moving on to using data in our scripts. Then, just as we create menus using CL, we show how we can do this in Bash. The next section, we will show you how to customize Bash. The final section is dedicated to how we can use IBM I built-in functions to help our day-to-day -day workload. In this section we will be covering an introduction to writing bash scripts, using variables within a script and then how we execute a script and pass arguments or parameters to it. Firstly a bash script lives in any directory on our IFS, whether it's our home directory or an application directory. They are just text files they do not need to have an extension, but we always put an extension of .sh on all our script files. Bash scripts are not like CL, RPG, nor COBOL that have to be compiled. They are interpreted, so no compiling. You write the code, then you run it. Each line of your script is run in the order you specify, nice and simple. We can use any editor IDE to write our scripts. I will be using Visual Studio Code or VS Code. Again, see my videos on our channel about using VS Code with files on our IFS. The first line of a bash script is what they call a shebang. What a great name. A shebang consists of an hash sign, then an exclamation mark and the location of our bash executable. On the IFS, our shebang would be hash exclamation mark slash user slash bin slash emv space bash. Any comments in a shell script are prefixed with the hash character. Let me fire up VS Code and navigate to my training directory. I'm going to create a new file called andy.sh. The first line is going to be the shebang. It turned red, so we leave that line alone. Next to comment, hash hello. And on the next line, echo, double quotation marks, hello Andy, and then the quotation marks. VS Code auto saves. So now I'll switch over to my bash session. A quick ls shows my new andy.sh file and we simply run it by typing in andy.sh and hello to you our first shell script if we try running just andy without the extension it would not run so remember to use the .sh extension now moving on to variables hello equals in quotes hello you will notice I've got no spacing around the variable name the equals and the value in quotes. If I type hello equals hello again with spaces around it, it fails 
as it's looking for the command hello, not what we want. To use a variable, you prefix it with the dollar sign, as in echo dollar hello. Shell variables have no data type, they just store strings. Shell variables are case sensitive. If you try to use a variable without a sign in it, it would have nothing. It will not fail with an undefined variable error. For example, if I type echo dollar x, nothing is displayed. So no error handling there. It is recommended not to use uppercase for your own variables, as these are used for predefined variables. If I type echo dollar user in uppercase, I'll get Andy, as that is my user profile that I've signed on to this bash session with. You can see all these predefined variables by typing in set. To use any of these variables in our script, we just use dollar, then uppercase, the name of the predefined variable. If I want to join two variables together, I could just type echo, and in quotes, dollar hello in lowercase and dollar user in uppercase and then I would get hello Andy ah very nice just as I have typed these variable assignments directly into a shell I could do the same in a shell script let me do that in VS Code hello equals and in quotes hello no spaces around it remember then echo in quotes, dollar hello, then dollar user in uppercase. And back to my shell and run the script andy.sh. We get the same results. Now we know all about variables, that moves us nicely on to our next topic in this set arguments in Bash. This is where we call our shell scripts and pass arguments to it. So it's a way of passing parameters into Bash. Let me show you. In Bash, we have special variables. These are known as argument variables, or as we know them as parameters. Just as we can call a program on the IBM I with parameters, we can call our Bash scripts with arguments. The value of these arguments is placed in $1 for the first argument, or parameter, $2 for the second, etc, etc. I'm sure you're getting this. Let me demonstrate these. In this example, I will show how we can use variables to create a directory structure on our IFS. The first part of the directory name will be held in a variable within our script. The subdirectory name is passed as an argument. I'll start a new script and call it dir.sh. Add the shebang then assign a variable called login to equals, in quotes, logs. Then we'll make a directory, mkdir minus p, which makes any parent directories, dollar login slash dollar one. Back to our shell session. We run the script, dir.sh, space IBMI as the first parameter. I'm going to run it again, at this time with Windows as the argument. That's run. A ls minus alf shows we now have a logs directory. I'll change over to that. And a ls again shows the two directories we passed as parameters. So we can see passing the parameters to it has made our script a lot more flexible. Let us add a line to inform the user of what just happened. Back to VS Code. Do an echo in quotes made directory dollar login slash dollar one in the quotes. Back to our shell. Gonna run it again. dir.sh passing Linux as the argument. Where it's let us know it is created the directory. All nice and neat.
I can hear you saying you don't have to use quotation marks when assigning a variable's value. Yes, you are correct. But there are times when if you don't use quotes, you will get, as they say, unpredicted results. So it's a good habit to get into. Once bitten and all that. Moving on to the next part about variables. Variable scoping. If I go back, I'll amend my script and change $1 to $log underscore dir. So my script expects it to be set outside the script. Back to the shell session. I'll set log dir equals in quotes bash. Then run dir.sh without any parameters. Ah, didn't take any notice of my log dir variable. So variables set in my script are internal to that script. To make any external variables available to my script, you have to use the export command to make that variable available to any subsequent script. So, export log underscore dir. And I'll run the script again. This time, it has taken notice of the external log dir variable. You will see this widely used within shell scripts, the export command. To set and export a variable, I could just type export log underscore dir equals in quotes bash, close quotes. Variables that are exported are also known as environment variables. Use the set command to list all your environment variables. And we can see the ones we have set there. That wraps up this topic on an introduction and variables in Bash. Look out for our next topic in this series, Conditioning. Subscribe to our channel so you'll be informed when our next video is available. If you need any further details about open source or IBMI, check out all our videos at learning.formaserve.co.uk and the articles we have written for powerwire.eu. I hope you find them useful and let us know if there are any other topics you want us to cover. Even through these difficult times, my company, Formaserve, is still providing training on our favourite platform, the IBMI. Whether it's remotely, through a mask, we are still here for you. If it's traditional programming using RPG and CL, or the modern methods of integrating open source into your infrastructure, we are here to help. We have over 30 years of teaching on the IBMI. Why not use us to get up to date and be at the forefront of the post-pandemic world? Formaserve uses Microsoft Teams software to develop top-notch training material. Take a look, you will not be disappointed. As many students have found, all our training is very informal, it's the way to learn. Find out what it's like to have fun while training. And that wraps up this quick video. Thank you for watching our How To on IBM I video set. I hope you found them useful. Keep checking out our website, learning.formaserve.co.uk and our YouTube channel. We regularly add new ones. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thank you.